Welcome back to Factory Floor, our Shop Talk spinoff all about the factory experience at AU. I'm Jonathan Odom. In the first two episodes, we explored concept design and electronics. Today, we're jumping into a cornerstone of manufacturing, CNC machining. We use CNC machining in the factory experience, and it's one of the main attractions on the floor. Running CNC machine production parts with the perfect setup can save you a ton of time and money. Fusion gives you the tools to move faster, cut waste, and keep costs down without compromising quality. I'll be sharing some best practices I've picked up while working on the factory experience for AU. Tips on staying agile, avoiding costly mistakes, and making the most of what Fusion has to offer. Let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to talk about when it comes to CNC machining is value engineering. Um, value engineering is what you do when you have a concept and you need to uh, pare it down to make it cost effective without sacrificing the design intent of the original project. If you remember from the first episode, there were some concept designs we walked through. Um, and the first concepts had some really complex geometry, swoopy curves and uh, tapered sides and all kinds of features that would made would have made it really expensive. What we ended up with in this case is something that has a, a profile that's straight on both sides, right? Um, the reason we landed on this is because when we started doing simulation and fusion and trying out the different concepts, we realized that if this had been something that had a swooped, you know, a, a sort of curvy profile, the first thing we would have needed would have been thicker stock. So the stock we're working with here is a tube that I think is about a quarter inch by three inches, give or take. Now, the reason we went with this shape is that first of all, the stock is thinner. So if you go from what it would have taken to get that curved profile, that would have been a stock that was like maybe a half inch wall thickness. And that costs a lot more than the quarter inch, maybe twice as much. You figure it's about twice as much material. That's one change we made to value engineer this to make it affordable. Um, the other change we made was that we added this lip feature right here. Um, this allowed us to make the assembly work so that when you stack it, this bears on this part right here. So instead of having to add more features to this, like maybe screw holes in the sides where you'd have to have set screws to hold the thing together, um, that feature allowed us to simplify the design and bring the cost down. The other thing we did here to value engineer it was instead of going with uh, these, these grooves in a more organic pattern that maybe would have um, wider and thinner profiles along these grooves, we went with a single tool path for each one. So when we simulated that where the widths of these changed, we were able to see that the time to production, the time to finish the, the job was much longer. And that just means more cost, no matter how you make it or who makes it for you. So with this one, we went with a 3 16th inch end mill uh, and did a full profile around the edge just following that curve. And then we were able to do the same thing with each one, a couple pockets in here. And throughout this whole process, finding ways to make it something that is uh, that looks good, that does the job, so this creates a good housing. Um, the fact that it's made of metal makes it feel so much more substantial. Um, the just CNC machining on its own, if you can incorporate it in a product, just makes the product cooler. The next product in on the list is the badge, of course. Now, this one for the production run didn't have any uh, CNC parts. The CNC part implicit in this, of course, is the uh, the mold, right? So this is an injection molded part. Um, these two uh, enclosure, the top, the enclosure top and bottom are injection molded. But um, like everything else on site, we are always showing off CNC machines. So one of the parts we did with this was this um, uh, CNC machined aluminum uh, top, right? So this is a, a separate option to what the production run is, which is this thing. In terms of value engineering here, uh, it, you're a little bit more limited because this, this again is based on a part that's already been designed for injection molding, right? So here we've got injection molding, uh, um, you know, there's there are certain features that have to fit together. This cavity for this part has to be the same on both sides. 
the, the geometry is much more dialed in. So there's not as much value engineering involved. It's more about just um, making a part that you can make on site to showcase that machine. Um, not really suitable for a production run for this type of thing. And in terms of tolerance, once again, um, you the main thing with this part is that with injection molding, this is something we'll get into in a later episode, but um, you can see there's a reveal around the edge here. The reason that's there is because injection molded parts are thermoplastics and they bend a little bit. They don't keep a solid uniformity along the edge. So that little reveal there helps us hide those imperfections. And with a CNC machined part, if we didn't have that reveal, it would be much more visible because this, of course, is perfect. This is not going to uh, deflect at all. It's always going to be perfectly dead on. So if you're mixing CNC machine parts and uh, and through uh, plastic parts, injection molding, or even 3D printed parts, you have to keep that in mind. Um, this this will be d dimensionally stable over time. The plastic stuff will not, and you need to account for that when you're designing the parts. This is kind of fun too. We had another machine there, um, Daytron, I believe, did these, but uh, we made some metal CNC versions of the buttons. So these buttons are um, 3D printed TPU, and they've got uh, kind of a, you know, a tactile feel. It's the reason we went with that material. Um, they're flexible, which helps a little bit with this design. Um, not totally necessary, but it was also cool to have these uh, CNC machined options where you've got these shiny little buttons instead of the, uh, um, the black ones, just for some contrast. Okay, now moving on to the first version of the, uh, of the keypad. So what you're looking at here is a version that didn't just use the injection molded plastic uh, production version. Um, we also made these machined enclosures that are a, a separate option. You'll notice when you look at this that some of the features are, are treated a little bit differently. So um, on the production version, there are these like nice smooth curves um, giving you some, hmm, let's see, how are we going to look at that? Maybe if I give you, yeah, there we go. So you can see in this injection molded part, um, there are these curved cavities um, and those those let you uh, reach the reset button on the PCB and also a serial port if you want to program it yourself or expand it. And then of course, with a CNC machine part, you're not going to have the same exact kind of geometry. In this case, there's no need to have these curves on there because that would actually be a really difficult thing to get if you imagine a CNC mill going in here and routing out these pockets. So it was much better to just make those flat. Um, and they didn't really draw back from the aesthetic much. The other thing about this is that um, with an injection molded part, having clips, right, where you've got, can we see that right there? Yeah. These clip features that make this enclosure pop onto, pop onto the base we're not really able to do that with a CNC machine part because it would have been uh, way more tools, way more time. So we prototyped with it a bit and we found that we didn't actually need those clips to be there with this particular enclosure because the thickness of these little posts that we put in place, with that we were able to make a friction fit that kept this whole thing in place. And again, this is uh, straight off the machine because we did this live on site. But again, this is just for showing off the machines on site. Can you imagine how much it would cost to have a consumer product that it was a full uh, depth CNC machined part that's been routed out? It's not gonna happen. This would be, if this were metal, it would be sheet metal, be something that was bent and welded and so on. So this is just a really cool example of, of what the machines can do. And then for the, the more recent version of this, I just wanna show you how different how much we improved the, the design here. So in this first one, we had all these fussy little details, these, these pockets with um, lips that had, uh, you know, two different levels to capture 3D printed parts to fit in, screw holes in place for the PCB, um, and really having nothing to do with the aesthetics. If you look at the bottom of the device, you look at the bottom of it, it's kind of a mess. We've got rubber feet here, and there's screws here, and one of the screws is hidden, and there's these little rubber things fitting through. It's the back of the device, so arguably it doesn't matter as much. But thankfully, when we recruited Jeff Smith, who is our resident industrial designer, he took a look at it and said, uh, I think we can solve this better and have a much more uh, clean design when you look at the back of the device. So you can see here the screws are in line. Uh, the screws 
screw into the enclosure instead of relying on clips. Um, and then the PCB on the inside uh, is basically just captured by the compression of all these parts coming together. So going from this really complex uh, CNC machine part that also took a lot more time to this one, which is very simple. It's got one pocket here for the USB uh, cable, for the USB connector. It's got four pockets here for the uh, the, the threaded um, studs on the bottom of the uh, of the PCB. And then it's got four countersunk holes for, for screwing this into the bottom of the enclosure. Finish on this one, once again, is, uh, is clear anodized. So this is what it looks like when you just use nickel as your, uh, as your cathode or anode. Um, again, please tell me which one it is in the, in the comments. That's about it. I mean, we've got, there's, we also did this machined version of the top enclosure. So Haas did this one for us. If you wanted to get a CNC machined version of one of the parts on site, uh, it's really just kind of luck of the draw. The way we run it is that each machine that's running parts on site is just doing one part after another. We try to get as many done on site as we can. It usually ends up being about one part per group. Um, we can keep these processes down to about 20 minutes in most cases, sometimes much faster than that. And if you happen to be uh, in a group in time for the part to come off and be cleaned, uh, you can just take that one with you and use that instead of the one from the bin, which would be an injection molded one. There's a lot of people that prefer the injection molded one. Um, you know, it's uh, it, you know it's see through, right? You can you can see what's going on inside it. When you plug it in, there's uh, there's LEDs that that show up, and some people just kind of prefer the aesthetics of this. If you're at AU this year, uh, our new product, we're going to have CNC machined versions of of different parts. Also 3D printed versions of some of the parts. Um, so you should have a pretty cool variety to choose from. So I hope you enjoyed this episode on CNC machining. Um, this is a powerful tool and Fusion has a lot of great features that help you get the best out of CNC machining. CNC machining, like I mentioned, is not always there in consumer products. You don't always see it as part of, the, a part of your, your device but it's implicitly there in just about everything, including injection molding, which happens to be our next episode. So please come back for that. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell. We'll see you next time.